What's up everyone, Chance here with Real Sim Gear. In this video, I'm gonna show you what's in the box when you order the G3X. Then we're gonna take it over to the computer. I'm gonna show you how to set it up and then I'll demonstrate a few things that you can do once you got it all set up. And before I get into the details, this is only for Microsoft Flight Simulator right now. And so if you're using X-Plane, we are working on getting it ready. And so depending on when you're watching this video, I'll include a link up here once that is ready or a link in the description, just depending on where you're watching this. And if not, just be patient with us, we're working on it. Now, before I unbox it, I'm going to go over some of the optional accessories that you might wanna pick up when ordering any of our Real Sim Gear avionics. And so to start, the first thing you wanna ask yourself is how are you going to mount it? And so you do have a couple options. You can use our Real Sim Gear desktop stand that looks like this when it's mounted. It's nice and heavy duty, comes with some rubber feet on the stand so it doesn't move around on you. And you can just place it right on top of your desk and unplug things accordingly and plug them back in. So it's a nice easy transfer if you need to move things around on your sim all the time. Okay, and then the second option to mount it is our Real Sim Gear yoke top package. With the Real Sim Gear yoke top package, you could have your Real Sim Gear avionics on one side, so audio panel, GPSs, autopilot. And then the left side, you could have something like a G5, a G500, or the G3X. And that's all mounted on top of a yoke, and then you can choose what type of throttle you want there as well. And so those are your mounting options. And then you wanna ask yourself, how are you gonna hook it up? And these are a couple things that just might make your life a little bit easier. So to start, we have these USB hubs. And so if you're running out of USB ports on your computer, or you just want a little bit easier access to them, you could mount one of these on top of your desk to make plugging things in and taking things down just all that much easier. So we have a 10 port hub and a seven port hub. I like the 10 port hub because it has the connections that go to the wall in your PC on the back. Whereas the seven port hub has just kind of everything in the front there. Okay, the next thing that's gonna make your life a little bit easier, especially if you're running out of HDMI ports on your PC is this dual HDMI to USB 3.0 hub. And so this thing will allow you to essentially plug in two pieces of real sim gear avionics into a single USB port. If you are gonna use one of these, I would make sure that this goes directly into your PC, not into a hub. You just want the least amount of stuff in the way of that connection. Okay, that's it for optional accessories. Let's go ahead and unbox this thing and we'll take it over to the computer and I'll show you how to set it up. All right, it comes with this quick start guide right here. As I mentioned in the beginning, it is only for Microsoft Flight Simulator right now at the time of this recording, and we are working on X-Plane for you, so we'll keep you updated. Everything in here though, I'm basically gonna go over everything in this video for you. All right, here is the G3X. This thing really feels awesome. It's got a good weight to it. The knobs feel great, have a great sound. Oh yeah, this is just like how it is in the real airplane. All right, and then on the back here, super simple. You have a USB type B to A connection. It's gonna go into your computer, the HDMI port right there. That's going into your PC. And then you have the power supply that is going to go into the wall. Okay, so we'll set that off to the side. So here is the USB type B to A connection. This part is gonna go into your G3X, and then this part is gonna go right into your PC or one of those seven or 10 port hubs. And with every purchase, you're gonna get some of our screws in case you picked up one of our stands. And then finally in the box is the power supply. So whenever you order our G3X, just make sure you get the product itself, a USB type of B to A connection, our screws, and the power supply. And then like I said, you're also gonna to wanna to pick up an HDMI cable so you can plug this into your PC. Okay, now that we have everything unboxed, let's go ahead and head over to the computer and I'll show you how to set it up. Okay, now that it's all unboxed, it's time to set it up on your PC with Microsoft Flight Simulator. And we're gonna break this down into six easy steps, starting with making the physical connections. And then we're gonna adjust some Windows display settings. And then we're going to map the touchscreen since it is a fully functional touchscreen. We're gonna head over to our website to download the device interface and the command mapping file. And then once all that's done, we're gonna start Microsoft Flight Simulator, run the pop-out procedure, which is a little bit of a lengthy process on that step. And then we're going to finally run a test. So let's get into it. Now I've already went ahead and mounted to the G3X to its desktop stand. And so if you did pick up a desktop stand, then you're gonna need something like this three millimeter Allen key. Now, if you are mounting it onto a stand, it just needs to be finger tight. But if you wanna get it really, really tight, a pair of pliers might help you here. But I just used the Allen key and got it mostly snug and it's not going anywhere. So once you have it on the stand, it's time for step one, which is to make the physical connections. Now the physical connections part is super easy. Just go ahead and plug the power supply into the wall, plug the USB type B to A cable into the PC or the 10 port hub. And then you're gonna wanna connect the HDMI cable into your 
your PC or into the dual HDMI to USB adapter, which is what I'm going to use since I already have a ton of monitors connected on this PC. So once you're done making all the physical connections, you should see some type of display on the G3X. If not, go back and check the connections on the back of the G3X and the connections into your PC. But since I can see the display on the G3X, it's time to move on to step two, which is to change some Windows display settings. So I'm going to right click, click on display settings. And the first thing that I want to change is where your computer thinks that this G3X is. And what we recommend is you place the screen to the bottom right of your main full screen monitor. And so if you have multiple monitors to figure out which screen is the G3X, you're going to hit this identify button right here. And that's going to populate a number on every single one of your monitors. So I have three monitors here and I'm looking at the G3X, which has the number four on it. And so this is the one that I want to place to the bottom right of my two. And this 32 inch that I have up here has the number two on it. So it's going to the bottom right of that one. Then I'm going to click apply. So now your computer thinks that the G3X is to the bottom right of my main screen somewhere over there, which is just kind of how we want you to always do it. It helps with a lot of scenarios. So that's just the best place to put it. OK, the other setting that we want to change is we're going to hover over here and click on system. And then we're going to come down here and click on multitasking. And what I want you to do is turn this snap windows feature off with it on. You can drag the screen and it will just try to snap to some type of multitasking view and you can have it take up just a different amount of space on your screen. When we're setting up the simulator, it's kind of a pain in the butt. It could get annoying, could get in your way. So I just recommend turning it off. And then the last window setting that we want to change is to make sure that the taskbar automatically hides on every single screen. And so I'm going to come over here to personalization and then find the taskbar, which is the third one from the bottom. Click on that and then I'll click on taskbar behaviors on the bottom here. And I want to automatically hide the taskbar. So you just want to make sure this top one here is checked. So it is for me. And now it's time to move on to the next step, which is to map the touchscreen of the G3X. So I'm going to exit out of this. I'm going to go ahead and hit my Windows key on my keyboard, or you can just hover your mouse over the bottom and get the taskbar to populate and then click on the Windows icon. And then I'm going to click on the search bar and type in control panel. So I'll click on that. And if for some reason, when you pull up this window, if it looks something like this, go ahead and click on the top right and select category. That way it's just going to be a little bit easier for you. And then I'm going to click on hardware and sound. And then under this tablet PC settings section right here, I want to calibrate the screen for pen or touch input. So click on that. And then all you have to do here is click on setup. And what it's going to do, it's going to turn every single one of my screens white. And on one screen at a time, it's going to say tap the screen if it's a touch screen. And if it's not, click on enter. So that one's not a touch screen. I'm going to hit enter, not a touch screen, enter, not a touch screen, enter. Now, now that that's on the G3X, I'm going to tap on it. And that's all you have to do. Super easy. So now Windows knows that this is a touch screen and you can drag your finger over it and you can kind of see the mouse tracer on the touch screen. So that's set up. That's working. And now it's time for the next step, which is to head over to realsimgear.com so we can download a couple things like the real sim gear device interface and an updated command mapping file. So go ahead and go to realsimgear.com and then you're going to click on this support tab right here. All right, that's going to take you to a page that looks like this. And we're going to click on the very first one, which is downloads. And since we're setting up something for Microsoft Flight Simulator, we'll just click on the downloads for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So that'll bring you to this page and we're going to download a couple things here. We're going to download the Microsoft Flight Sim add-on installer and then we're going to download a command mapping file to ensure that we have the most up-to-date one. So if you don't have a GTN 650 or 750 from Real Sim Gear that you're using in combination with the G3X, it does not matter which one of these you download. So might as well just click on the first one. Now, if you are using a GTN 650 or 750 with the G3X with Microsoft Flight Simulator, then you are probably using either PMS or TDS. And if you're using PMS 50, click on this top one. If you're using TDS, click on bottom one. We're not going to get into the details of that in this video, and I don't have a GTN, so I'm just going to click on this first one. Okay, when you do click on it, it's probably going to block the download. And so what you're going to want to do is click on wherever it downloaded, and then it's going to say something like this file type isn't commonly downloaded, may be dangerous. It's not dangerous. And so go ahead and find where it says download anyway or download unverified file. So then if you look again, it is already downloaded. And then I'm also going to download the device interface application as well. And so those download in just a couple of seconds. So now I'm going to show you what to do with them. So starting with the device interface, go ahead and click on it wherever it is. If you need to pull it up in the file explorer, you can click on the little icon there and that's going to populate it here. Or if you need to pull up the file explorer and you don't see it just like how I see it, you can right click on your file explorer icon on your taskbar and then click on file explorer and then it will pull it up as well. So it's going to be in your download section and then go ahead and double click on the exe file here. And then it's going to pull up something that the screen recording never grabs, but it's going to ask you, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Go ahead and click on yes. And then we're just going to follow the prompts 
to get this install going. So I'll click next, I'll click I agree. And then when you get to this screen, you don't need these touchscreen drivers. This is for an older generation GTN. You don't need it for the G3X, so don't install that. You won't need the drivers that it tries to install for you. So go and click on next. Don't change this, keep it the same. Just click install. And if you've already downloaded our device interface, it'll bring up something like this. So you can just go and click on yes, and then you're done. So we can click finish. And now it's time to place the command mapping file in its correct location. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this command mapping file and we're gonna plop it into where we downloaded the device interface. And if we go back to the support page, it shows you where to download it right here. So it should be in your C drive under program files, under real sim gear, Microsoft Flight Simulator device interface, device interface folder. So I'll show you where that is. So we go back, alt tab is like your best friend, by the way. That's how I pulled up the file explorer, much easier. So if you don't know that, alt tab, gonna save you some time. So basically I'll go to my local disk C, it's probably already populated up here. And so you can just click on local disk C, that'll bring you to your general local disk C. And then I'll click on program files, not the x86 program files, just the regular program files. We'll come down here to real sim gear, MSFS device interface, double click on that, open it up, and then we'll open device interface. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this command mapping INI file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up another window here in my file explorer, come down to and click on downloads. And then I'm gonna grab this command mapping file. So I'm gonna click on it once, and then I'm going to drag it over to the device interface tab. And then I'm going to plop it into this folder. It's gonna ask me if I want to replace the current command mapping file. Yes, we do. We wanna replace it just to make sure it's the most up to date. So I'll click on replace the file in the destination. And then if you get this administrator thing, just click continue and that replaces it. Okay, and then you're done. And now it's time to simply load up Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let's go and do that. So I'll just exit out of everything. Okay, and then I'll just click on my Microsoft Flight Simulator icon and let that load up. Okay, now that you have Microsoft Flight Simulator loaded up, go ahead and keep it running. But we need to go back to realsimgear.com and we need to download this thing for the pop-out manager to get the G3X to work properly. So it's a little bit of a lengthy process for this pop-out manager thing, but bear with me. So remember, Alt-Tab is your best friend. Go ahead and go back to the main realsimgear.com page or to that support page. Click on support, and then we're gonna come down here to guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So I'm gonna click on that, and then I'm gonna scroll down to this link here that says setting up the Microsoft Flight Simulator pop-out panel manager. So I'll click on that guy. And then I'm basically gonna walk you through this entire article. There's kind of a lot of stuff. So just one step at a time here, back at the top, go ahead and scroll down under this getting started section and click on the Microsoft Flight Simulator pop-out panel manager. We need to download it from this GitHub website. And so basically you're gonna come down here under this assets thing, go ahead and populate that if you don't see it and then click on the pop-out panel manager zip folder. So that's gonna start a download and then go back to your downloads page like I showed you before. We're going to extract this zip folder. So by right clicking on it and then hovering over this extract all thing, clicking on that. Okay, and then when you get here, we actually recommend changing this to a separate folder inside of your documents folder. So it's maybe a little easier to come back to. So when you click on that, it'll pull up another file explorer and then find your documents tab over here. And I'm gonna make a new folder and I'm gonna title it Microsoft Flight Simulator Pop-Out Panel Manager. Okay, and then I'll select into there and then I'll click on select folder. And then now you can see that it should show documents and then a separate folder inside of documents and now click extract. Okay, so that'll just take a couple seconds and then it should pull up the folder that you just downloaded. Okay, and then you're gonna want to run the exe file. So go ahead and click on that. And then you might get some type of Windows protected thing. You're gonna click on more info or whatever it might say and just find a way to get it to run anyway. Okay, and then now we've successfully downloaded the pop-out panel manager. Okay, and then once this is open, we wanna change a couple of settings inside of this pop-out manager. So under this general settings section, go ahead and click on auto start and minimize to tray. Essentially, that's gonna start the pop-out panel manager every single time, and it's gonna minimize it so it doesn't populate in the way. And then everything else for the purpose of this video, you can just go ahead and leave as default. So we'll click on back. Okay, now that we have those settings changed, let's go ahead and load up Microsoft Flight Simulator for this next part to work. So I'm just gonna alt tab over to my Microsoft Flight Simulator, and then I'm gonna load into a flight. And so I can just kind of move Move this out of the way for now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and load into a flight. So I'll click on world map, and then I'm gonna select this aircraft icon up here, and I'm gonna select this cub. If you don't see this cub right here, you can just type in cub in the search bar. It's the first one. That one has a G3X on the panel, so we're gonna use that for this video. And you can just depart out of any airport. I'm gonna depart out of Montgomery, KMYF. We'll go ahead and start up on the runway. I think when I do that, the engines just automatically are started. If you choose one of these ramp spots, it will startup shut down. So just for the sake of this video, I'm going to load up right on the runway and I'll click on fly. Okay, now that I'm loaded up on the runway, engine's running, go ahead and bring back up your pop-out manager or you can alt tab over to it depending on where you placed it. And now we're going to start 
building a profile for this cub so the G3X will work. So I'm gonna click on this top right button here, which is to add a new aircraft profile. I'm gonna simply title it cub click accept. And then now we're going to add the G3X profile. We're inside of our cub profile here. I'm going to click on this add button and I'm just going to title it G3X. All right. And then click on this identify source panel location right here. And so what that's going to do is that's going to populate this green circle somewhere on the screen. And so what you're going to want to do is place it in the middle, about in the middle of your G3X and then come back to your pop out manager and then select this toggle panel source button right here. Toggle editing a panel source. Go ahead and click on it. Okay. After you click on that, you'll see this start pop out button appear and then go and click on that. And that's going to start running through this series of checks in order to pop out that G3X from the panel there. And that way we can place it onto the screen. OK, and so just it might pop out. Just be patient before you change anything. Don't uh, don't move that around yet. Just wait until it says it's totally finished. OK, pop out has been completed successfully. Then your pop out manager should repopulate. And now what we're going to do is going to work to remove these black bars on the side of the G3X screen here, and then we're going to remove the white bar. So I'm going to show you how to do that. How to remove the white bars. I'm going to click on this arrow next to where it says width, and then I'm going to start reducing the width on here till the black bars totally go away. So it looks like that's about fully gone. I'll just click a little further. Looks like at about right there at 1197 on the width is where it's totally gone. OK, that's good. Now I'm going to click on two things. I want to toggle the panel touch capability. So I want to make sure that my touch screen works when I drag it over to the G3X here. And then I'm going to click on this drop down right here and I'm going to hover over to full screen mode. But before I click on that, I'm going to take it over to my G3X. So remember where you placed your G3X screen in your display settings earlier. I put it to the bottom right. I hope you did too. So I'm just going to come over to the bottom right of my main monitor and I'm going to drag it over until it shows up on my G3X here. And then I'll come back to my pop out manager. So if you lost it, you might have go ahead and hit alt tab and that should pull this back up. And then I'm going to click on full screen mode. And so when I click on full screen mode, that will maximize the G3X screen on your G3X. And then that is it, my friends. Finally, we've got through this pop out manager thing. It's full screen. It's maximized. There's no white bar. There's no black bars. And now you can just go ahead and test it. So, OK, so I've moved this over here. We have zoomed in on the cockpit a little bit so you can see a little bit what I'm doing. And I'll just show you a few things that you can do with this. So starting on the left here, we can change our transponder code. Let's say we got uh, 2242. I don't know. Then hit enter and then we can hit the ident button to flash air traffic control, right? And then we can adjust our altitude bug. So let's say we were climbing. Let's, we, let's say we also had an autopilot or something climbing up to 4,000 feet or whatever. The outer knob here changes your heading. So so set to runway heading there. If we click on the standby frequency here, we can adjust our comm. So let's say departure for this airport is, uh, it is actually 125.7. And then let's say we were going to get up in the air and swap to 119.6, which is the typical frequency for this direction. So 119.6 enter. All right. And then you can hit this top right button up here where it says full to go to full screen. You can hit that again to go back to split screen. If you take this big knob, you can scroll from the map section to the flight plan section to the procedure section. So if you want to shoot some approaches, you can definitely do that in this thing. So let's say we want to set up an approach back to Montgomery. I think the easiest way to do that is to go to the nearest button first and we'll type in and we'll select Montgomery and then we can hit the direct to activate button right there. Now we have a straight line directly going to Montgomery it's going to be easier for us to put in our procedure. So if we go back and then we select approach, now Montgomery will already be loaded and we can select our transition. Bakel is the typical one that you would usually get. And then we can hit load and activate or just load. And that's going to give us a waypoint directly to Bakel, like you see on the screen there. OK, if you want to adjust your audio from COM1 to COM2, you can just hit COM2 mic. That'll swap you totally over. COM1 mic, that'll swap you totally back. You can ID your nav frequencies, right? Those kinds of things. If I adjust the throttle here, you're going to see that display on the manifold pressure and your, your PSI and everything. So watch, I'll just ramp up the throttle. I got the parking brake on right now, but just ramp up the throttle. You can see the RPM, the oil pressure, temperature, all that stuff. That's going all the way up. So this thing definitely does a lot. I'm really excited to get my hands on one of these finally. Most of you probably know me as an X-Plane guy too, so it's going to be fun to use Microsoft Flight Simulator while I try this thing out a little bit. But that is basically it for setting up your G3X with Microsoft Flight Simulator. I know that pop-out manager thing was quite a few steps, but if you do need any help, feel free to email us at support at realsimgear.com 
flightsimulator.com and we'll get you some help right away. Now, if you did want to learn more about how to use your flight simulator to prepare for real world flight training, then you should check out our course called Flight Sim Pro. Inside the course, we teach you how to use your flight sim to prepare for your private pilot certificate. And depending on when you're watching this, your instrument rating. We show you how to use your checklist to start, taxi, take off, level off, descend, land, everything that I would teach one of my student pilots as I'm a CFII with over 3000 flight hours. And I've jam packed this course with all the pro tips that I've learned over the last seven years of flying, which I know will save you the headache that I had to go through to learn it all. So if you want to sneak a peek inside the course, you can click the link below to watch our video on how to start a Cessna 172 or head over to flightsimpro.com to learn more. But that is just about it for setting up the G3X with Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let us know if you need anything else and we'll catch the next one. See ya.